Hello, good morning, everyone. Uh, this is Ramanathan here. Uh, so this uh, talk is about feature engineering in general, and we will extend the feature engineering for time series feature engineering, and particularly to the financial markets use case. Uh, so let's start with the beginning. Um, so it's going to be an interactive session. Uh, not going. It's not going to be a one way session. So please be interactive. So we have two systems. We have traditional systems, the way things are done, and there are machine learning systems, the way currently things are being worked out. How, how does things work in traditional system? We give data, also we give rules, and we get the outcome. So outcome is not negotiable, whereas data and rules is something we can play with it. We can play the rules to get the desired outcome, or we, if you don't want to play with the rules, we can transform the data to get the desired outcome. So there are two degrees of freedom, if you notice here. So data and rules. In machine learning, the game is uh, exactly upside down, right? We have data and outcomes which we give as the input and get back the rules and models as the output. So we don't have control over what rules the system will throw up and we don't have control over the what the outcomes should be. So only one degree of freedom is available, that is data. This data can undergo transformations, which we call features or feature engineering. Uh, only by tweaking the data or transforming the data, we can get better accuracy of the models. So these are the two contrasting ways of looking at things when it comes to problem solving. So machine learning, uh, since this term has been uh, used very often and heard very often, I'm not getting into the details. It takes data and outcomes and it throws back the rules or what we call models. Uh, let's take a look at what data is and then decide what the features should be. So this is the database of the POS system. POS system is the point of sale system. It has some columns. It will have more columns typically, more tables, relationships, all that. But we have these columns. What date the transaction happened or date time? Who is the one that's from consumer ID and uh, bill number? Uh, what the item purchased? How much? How many items being purchased? What the bill amount? What the discount percentage? This is the typical data that is available in a POS system. Now this is data. Is this the feature? Feature depends on what the objective is. <coughs> Let's say we want to model loyalties. What, what all should be the features? By looking at the data, can we arrive at the features? So for loyalty analytics, we would like to know how many times the person visited the store, frequency of the visit. It is not there in the data set. Nowhere in the data set, it is told consumer ID one visited three times in last one month. It is not set in the data set, right? So loyalty analytics says frequency and what is the um, since when the customer is in the system, whether the customer is there in the system for five years, five months, or uh, five, uh, whatever number. So this also needs to be calculated. So these columns can be calculated from the base database system. That's the idea, right? So these are called features. These are called features. This is the data, pure system data. From the data, depending on the objective, we calculate new set of columns to meet the objective or to model the objective. Those columns are called features. And sometimes we take directly, let's say build amount is important for me. Where is it important? If it is a customer value analytics, build amount is important. So I take directly, that also becomes a feature. So data sometimes directly becomes a feature. Sometimes we generate the feature from the data. That's the point here, right? So loyalty analytics can be done. How, how frequent, how recent, how old the customer is, what kind of purchases he's making, all that can be embedded or encoded. Use that data to build a model whether the customer is loyal or not loyal. Similarly for customer value analytics, whether the whether customer value, customers of high value customer or a medium value customer or a low value customer, what can be the major factor? That's the build amount or build amount every month, build amount every year. That's a call we can take. 
So similarly for sales forecasting, what all will be important? We need a time series. What has been the purchases? Um, oh, what has been the sales for last three months? What will be the sales for the next three months? So we need different kind of a features for promotions, targeted promotions for modeling targeted promotions. We need we, we will design features that will help us promote it. For example, a customer who has been buying uh, goods worth 1000 rupees every month has not turned up last two months. That is a feature and I'll target that particular customer, give him an offer, give him a freebie, ensure he walks into the store and continue purchasing from us. So the feature here is different. Similarly, for the sake of pricing, uh, pricing we need a lot more. Uh, one is the demand, only demand is there. Supply information is not there in the system. We may have to source supply information. We may have to source competitor information. We may have to source more than what is given in say the data. So that is another thing. So we may have to build a new set of features and then decide which product should be priced at what range and should there be a discount or not? Should there be a, a you know quantity discount or a quality discount? All the decisions can be taken further. Similarly, inventory analytics. So data is this is the only data set. There is no other data set with us. Depending on the objective, we build features. It could be uh, any features. Anything that will meet the objective for me is a feature. If it is available from the data set, if it can be derived from the data set, well and good. Otherwise, go source it. There is no, comp no uh, compromise on that. Not date features are not negotiable. Either. Otherwise, you will compromise on your accuracy of the model and dependency of your model. So this is the basic introduction about the feature. I hope the distinction between the data and feature are very clear. Any questions we can pass for a moment? And then take it up. I'll continue and then you can stop me when needed. Uh, yes, so we saw the features or the new set of columns which we create to meet the objective uh, in a structured data setup. In an image data, the image itself is a feature. Let's not get there. Uh, for NLP, the feature is slightly differently defined. Let's not get there. For a structured data, that is a data arranged in rows and columns. Features are nothing but the new set of columns which we create that will help us model the objective. Is that clear? Now we saw the features are context specific. Depending on what context we do, uh, generate features. Now there can be more than context, right? For example, we have all the variables that is needed for the context, but the model will need uh, some amount of standardization between variables. So there are a lot of standardization techniques. Basically, these are new columns which we further create. For, for example, standardization means X minus mean by standardization, X minus mu by sigma. What is this expected to do? It's very popular, right? Minus three sigma to it will range the values to minus three sigma to plus three sigma. So all the columns will have values that is minus three sigma to plus three sigma. Uh, that uh, that helps a model to learn better. Otherwise, if the variations are huge, it takes time to converge and it, it gives a lot of side effects. So standardization is important. Another thing is called normalization. Normalization is to between zero to one. Uh, so minimum value will be zero, maximum value, value will be one. Uh, so there are two ways to calculate this. You can do it both the ways. And uh, there, is, uh, there are more ways to, what is standardization? Standardization is all about bringing the data under control, bringing the data consistent across the board, across the table in all the columns, right? There is something called average behavior. You take every value divided by the average of that column. Uh, and any number above one means it's above average. Any number below one means it's below average. Take every value divided by some, we get the proportionate behavior, right? What is what we call percentage otherwise? It will all add to one. Here it will all add to one. In this case, it will be between zero and one. 
what will happen here? It will all add to average. And this is standard deviation. This is the nothing but the variation of this formula. Only thing is the mean shift does not happen. It reduces the standard deviation of the variable. If the standard deviation of the variable is considered high for some reason, we divide the all the values divided by the standard deviation. The uh, standard deviation of the values will be far less. There can be more ways to standardize stuff, right? For example, if I divide one by x, what will happen? Uh, I take all, all the values, you know, one divided by each of the value will be the new value, a transformed value. What happens in this case? Lower value gets higher weights. Gets higher weight. Higher value gets lower weight. And x square will again increase the variance. You take any column, calculate the variance, square the column, square the values in the column and calculate the variance. You will get an increased variance. Many a times this is needed because the values are so close. There is no variance at all or very minimal variance, but that column is very important for the model. How do I make use of that? There is no difference of say the value, the difference between two values in the column are 2.001 and 2.002. So the difference is 0 0.001. How would we uh, increase the variance between these two values? If we do squaring, it will increase the variance between the two, uh, two values. Uh, increase the variance of the feature. Square root is decreases the variance, just opposite. And log is another transformation. Logistic is that S curve transformation. These all also will standardize our data. And we can use trig functions also. If you have two columns and you want to use both the column and create a new column that has value between 0 and 1. It's tan inverse of x divided by will give you this. And there is a way to interpret it. So you can write your own standardization formulas depending on the context, depending on the need, do the necessary standardization. These standardizations are also called features in machine learning. So one set of features depending on objective, depending on objective we create features and do we do transform those features into new features in order to bring some consistency in the data set which we are dealing with. These two are uh, uh, two ways of uh, dealing with the feature engineering. Now let's go to the third column. There is something called auto feature engineering tools. Why, why you sit in feature engineer? That's the first question, right? In this case, because I know the objective, I know what features are important to build a model, so I build it. No automatic feature engineering tool can do this job. But there are some uh, features can be built automatically. For example, I have a 10 column table and for each column it will calculate x square, x cube, x, uh, x to the power of 4, log of x, uh, 1 divided by x, 1 divided by x square, 1 divided by x cube. Uh, for each column it will calculate tens of columns. And if you have 10 column table, you, will, you may even end up getting 500 column table. So that's the auto feature engineering tools are available. Two tools have made note of it here. One is called auto feet and another is called feature tools. Uh, these are kind of, uh, I wouldn't call it brute force, but exhaustive list of tools. Exhaustive list of columns you will end up getting. And at the time of modeling, you will end up spending more resources and you will have to do variable direction. Okay, there are so many variables which variables are important. I'll keep them and drop the other set of variables. Uh, only drawback in this kind of setup is explaining why that variable became part of the model. Explainability of the model because it's, it, we cannot say that I did trial and error and this column turned out to be an important column for the outcome of the model. I used it and that is the typical explanation given, uh, not a convincing one though. So uh, explore this auto featuring tools, uh, but uh, use it with caution. If you have no other go, if you don't know which variable to choose, which variable to not to choose, and uh, it will create all kind of variables which will shift the mean, which will increase the variance, which will decrease the variance, which will uh, invert the value, all kind of uh, operations, transformations will be done. 
and you will have ready made set of transformed or a new feature columns. So we saw features with respect to uh, a point of sale system so far because it's easy to understand. That's why I chose point of sale system. Uh, let's go to time series. OK, time series meaning here itself. We have something called a sales forecasting problem. For a sales forecasting problem, what all features will be built? So I have this data at the daily level or at the transaction level. I need data aggregated on a daily level. On first so much sales, second so much sales, probably item and day. On day one, item one got sold so many, item two got sold so many. On day two, item one, item two sales are so much. So that's aggregation. So we do aggregation. And we, we end up with a new data set. We still have not created new columns. We still have not created features. Now what kind of features can we think of creating for sales forecasting? What kind of features will help me to accurately predict what the sales tomorrow, next week or next month is going to be? So uh, that's a big day or weekend. Yes. Weekday or weekend is a very appropriate for this particular problem. If you are into a sales and you are into a point of sale system, you have only one binary variable, whether it is a weekday or a weekend. For some problems, you may want to know which day of the week. For example, uh, uh, in stock markets and all, Mondays, Thursdays has its own significance. Fridays has its own significance. There's something called expiry date has its own significance. So you may have to create so many dummy variables. Yeah, so that's where I'm heading to. So let's talk about time series. Typically what happens whenever a date is given immediately year and month are calculated. These two are counted as two different features and day of the week. First day of the week, second day of the week, third day of the week and eventually you create seven dummy variables. But do we need seven dummy variables for the kind of problem we have at our hand? We don't need it. We need whether it is a weekend or not. So that can be only one dummy variable. And also week num matters. First week of the month typically sales goes up because salary is being taken home, families go out, spend. So compared to the second, third, fourth week of the month, first week of the month has always been higher sales has always been higher and this is a festival weekend that could be another feature so only with the date column we can build features that matters to our objective so that's the time series this this kind of uh, features auto feature tools also provide but uh, i i prefer going by my own choosing rather than auto feature choosing it so depending on the problem, I'll choose what variable I will create from the data set. That's point number one. That is with the date column. Sometimes time also matters, whether it is the evening time, morning time, afternoon time. If time variable is available, that also matters. Uh, we'll check on that. And you have a whole lot of other variables, right? Let's say sales is there. How much units they sold? So that will have some noise. How do you remove noise? You do moving average. Moving average is also a feature provide for time series. Or running average as they call it uh, that will remove the noise and running standard deviation. Why running average and standard deviation on running slope? I can fit a straight line for five data points, get a slope and do the running slope. If it matters to me, why not? I can be as mathematical as I can get. So moving slope, moving standard deviation. So time series all has uh, needs a different kind of a mindset to build features compared to other compared to uh, objective led feature engineering here come or standardization. These have this need a different kind of a mindset. Time series will need a different kind of a mindset to create features. So whenever you deal with the time series problem, have the objective in the mind 
see how what all features can be generated and uh, this is where things get complicated when i tried my hands on financial markets that's the idea behind this uh, webinar so we'll get there okay before i get into the financial market system i will talk about two distinctions this is one to one or one on one to one mapping i have five images each image is either a dog or a cat whereas this is many to one is this a possible at all image one can be both dog and cat or image for uh, image one can be both dog and cat is it a possibility at all well if the image has both like two animals one is a dog one is a cat but you have label provision for only one right basically what i'm asking is i write a function y is equal to f of x can my x give two outputs if y is equal to square root of x yes right a square root of 4 is plus 2 minus 2 two outputs that is a possibility but uh, that's a special case i would say otherwise a input to a function should give me the same output and only one output every time i give that as a input otherwise machine learning will struggle right so how do we how do we address a problem like many to one or one to many one to many sorry this is not one, many to one it's one to many here we do what we call probabilistic programming if a same output can have more than one same input can have more than one output then we say 70% of the time this has been the case 30% of the time something else has been the case whereas machine learning it either has to say it is a cat or a dog it cannot say 70 uh, algorithms don't give you the probability for you even deep learning algorithms where when you process image it either tells you it's a dog or a cat it never tells you 80% it is cat 20% it is dog this is one thing i learned it harder way uh, because in stock market this is what i noticed i give the same input i expect output before even i expect output i investigate the history for the same input there has been multiple outputs so uh, you kind of hit a bottleneck then you end up become making probabilistic programming and probabilistic programming has its own uh, nuances challenges and uh, you hit a kind of a roadblock and you go back to where you start and start thinking again so this distinction is what i learned after the end of two years of research uh, let me give you an example let's go to financial markets there is a open high low close these are the four columns are given as the input not exactly this way it is let's say high is 10 points above the open low is 3 points below the uh, open and uh, close is 1 point above the open so 10 minus 3 one or my three features so i went and looked historically when whenever high is 10 points above open low is 3 points below open close is 1 point above open what kind of outcome did i get can i conclude can i conclude if this is the scenario the price in next 10 minutes will go up if this is the feature can the price in next 10 minutes go up can i conclude that at least 70 80% of the time does it happen like that when i looked at it no 50% of the time it went up 50% of the time it went down so whatever feature i have generated i have generated three features here what i have highlighted 
whatever feature I have generated here has more than one. Whatever feature, whatever input I give has more than one output and henceforth machine learning was challenging when I was using this data. Is that clear? That is the first challenge I faced. If there is some strong pattern, I would have built the model made money. Whereas markets are efficient. If there is a room to exploit, anybody would have exploited by this time. And henceforth, there is no room to exploit. That is point number one. And when I study the open, high, low, close, this is the data I get from the service providers or the stock markets who directly give it to me. I often see data like this. You see two data boxes here. They have the same open, they have the same close, they have the same high, they have the same low. What do the picture one depict in terms of future? What do picture two depict in terms of future? Picture one says the trend is looking up. Picture two says trend is looking down. Both of them are the same point. What is the reason? Here high came first, low came second. In this case, low came first, high came second. But how is it published always? OHLC. We go, go to the BSC website. They publish something called BAV copy. They publish open, high, low, close for every day for every stock. The important piece of information that we are missing, whether high came first or low came first. Was that an important piece of information for me to predict the future or not? I consider it that is important future. So this is another problem and uh, this is not visible in the candlestick. A candlestick says what is the low, what is the high, what is the open, what is the close. If the open is above close, it is in red. If the close is above open, it is in green. But it still doesn't tell whether high came first or low came first. So this was another. So I go on. First thing is I understood it is a probabilistic system and not a machine learning system. I, I attempted probabilistic programming but with limited success and then I started looking into the data. The number of features, the what they are giving is four features is not sufficient. We have to build more features so that this is different from this. And if the vector representation of this data is different from this data, then I can do the predictions. That is the call. Right now the vector representation is same, right? Open, high, low, close is same for both. Whereas picture is different, the fingerprint is different. So I attempted uh, writing more and more features so that every data point, every 20 minute candle, I am, po I am familiar or I am my popular candle length is 20 minutes candle. It can be 30 minutes, it can be 40 minutes. You want to do it one day candle also, that is fine. Every 20 minute candle should be represented by a unique vector. When I say unique vector, it should be a fingerprint and it should have its own. Then that if I manage to do that, I convert my probabilistic programming system to a machine learning system. Is that clear? So I go on generating more and more features. Okay, fine. I have I have differentiated this despite a high coming first and low coming second, open and close. I have two different. I have uh, two data sets which says the same thing but have different outcomes. What is different between those two? Then the different between those two could be uh, the timing. High came in the third minute in the first chart. High came in the seventh minute in the second chart. 
and low came 18th minute and 19th minute. So how soon the high came, how soon the low came. That was different and henceforth the outcome was different. So I recorded the time of the high, time of the low also. But the current candles don't give what came first and when did it come? Whether the third minute or 20th minute, that doesn't. So the candles lack all this information. Candle is the feature, everybody looks at it, but candle lacks lot of information which should have gone into decision making. So I went about uh, inventing more and more features until I find, okay, two 20 minute candles don't look same. It's, it was not the objective. The objective was to represent two 20 minute candles with distinct vectors and representing vectors. That's the idea. But uh, yeah, to, to put it, these two 20 minute candles will have its own fingerprint. And that's where I started building this. If you look at this, uh, inflection prices are given in an order. It's not OHLC, it is OLHC in this case. It is not always OLHC, it is o OHLC, it is OLHC. If it is OHLC, it will be OHLC. And uh, this is the time period of the inflection points. 10th minute it hit the high. Uh, sorry, it's low, right? 10th minute it hit the low. And the 62nd minute it hit the high and 88th minute it hit the close. So 1 and 80. So I give this points, I give this inflection points. Eigen points are nothing but after rotation. Right now, if you look at it, this data is same, but whereas in this data, I do rotate. Rotate so that uh, the angle is uh, irrelevant. After rotating, I calculate some metrics and then I publish those metrics. So if, if you notice for first 20 minutes on for this particular day, for st first 20 minutes of so many metrics are calculated and 21st minute, that is first minute to 21st minute. Uh, second 20 minutes, this is the third 20 minutes. So for each 20 minutes, I have calculated about 200 metrics. And lot more metrics are coming in its way. So I do calculate the distribution. I, this is the pressure points. Uh, there's a definition between each and everything. There's a detailed documentation is being written for each and every number, how to interpret a number, how to use it. Uh, what bias means, what constant means, what eigen means, all those documentation are being prepared. The idea is to prepare this data for nifty 50 stocks and hand it over to people so that they can start using this features to build models and come back. That was the idea, but uh, I was not keeping well. I couldn't uh, keep up with the time. So this is still work in progress. Probably in another couple of weeks, I would have put all the necessary data in a S3 bucket and uh, sharing with all of you who are interested. And going forward, once in a fortnight or so, we can come together, discuss the models that is being developed with this metrics or any new feature. If you want to add it, we'll improve the system. That is the idea behind the talk, but uh, sorry, I couldn't get the data ready yet. Uh, so the documentation, everything is being prepared. We'll complete it and then I will organize another webinar only to discuss what are the metrics, how to use them. Yep, that's all I had. Uh, uh, any questions, I'll be open to answer. Yeah, this is Arvind. So your yeah. 20 minute window is not just open, close, high, low. You are yes. calculating many more things. Yes. The 20 minute window. Okay. Yes. That was not sufficient. That was the reason. If you want to limit to open, high, low, close, then it becomes probabilistic. And probabilities are not very dependable there. Uh, you get a uniform distribution. If this is the kind of open, high, low, close I get, I get a uniform distribution anywhere between minus 1% to plus 1% returns the next 25 minutes. What decision can I take? So now uh, let's say I have just, uh, the market has just opened for today. Hmm. 
I uh, I have to only use uh, yesterday's data, right? Because today's data has not yet come in. Yes. So is that uh, so? Uh, the model must be clever enough to do that. Uh, one thing. Oh. Second thing is, uh, or is it better? Let's say if I want to do some uh, trading today, better mm. to wait for a few twenty minute windows and then start my trading. Okay. That is the call of the machine learning engineer or a data scientist who overtakes it. Uh, the data is aimed at short term profit making. There is no way you you are going to say with this kind of uh, representation data uh, next week this is going to be the price. So we are using every 20 minutes, every 30 minutes. Probably next 20, 30 minutes, what will happen is what we can tell. That's point number one. And morning first 20 minutes, we are not giving any metrics. Uh, so it's uh, totally up to the data scientist to decide. Whether I'll use the previous day's data or I'll use data from elsewhere because they call something pre open trading or something. Uh, there are pre open prices published. People make money in that space, but uh, we are not in that space. At least this feature engineering is not in that space. So this one I had put it for 2020 first of January. Uh, 20th minute, first 20 minutes. This is the second 20 minutes. It starts here. A detailed documentation is being written. We'll share soon. So I have for the whole day. And like this for one year data for all the 50 nifty uh, stocks, some uh, indices, some Forex and from for some international markets also planning to publish it. So one day's data for one stock, what will be the size of the file or whatever format uh -huh. in which you are publishing? One second, that's what I was getting. I forgot where is my data. No, this is not the one. I think it is inside this. Yeah, here it is. So I have to. Yeah, it's like 486 KB. Or 1.4 MB. Sorry, it's 1.4 MB. This has to be uh, compressed and encrypted. Put it into the S3 bucket. It's close to 1 MB, one day's data. So let's say I'm publishing it for a year. A year has about 20 into uh, 12, 250 days. Uh, so 250 MB for a year's data for one stock. For four stock, it is one GB. For 40 stocks, it is 10 GB. Probably that is the rate it's going to grow. I'll compress it. Also, I have to encrypt it. Both I have to do. And the users can subscribe to this data. At a price. Yes, at a, right now it's all in beta. I would put it that way. Right now it's all in beta. Uh, so users will get free credits and uh, users can build models and monetize it. That's where the system is heading to. So now the data is available. Data is available, available in plenty at a very cheap price. Let's say anybody can afford a data. In fee, uh, let's say uh, if it is Nifty 50 data, uh, you pay what uh, 200 rupees, 300 rupees, you get one year's data, build model, monetize it. Build models, learn it. The data was the bottleneck, right? Everybody was asking for, can you give me some data to model? Can you give me some data to model? Now data comes at a very Less price with a lot of mathematically rich features. And uh, uh, yeah, I, 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 I have a list of problem statements to be solved. They can take one problem statement and solve it. It's more of a community involved activity. So it's mathematically rich. Uh, data set, I'll tell you what. 
I publish key metrics is one thing I publish. This is what they publish called candles. Open, high, low, close alone gets expanded into so many things. And then we have angles. Everything is looked at as triangle and all the trigonometric values are calculated and uh, pressure points are calculated. Distributions are there for each uh, perspective. Uh, these are pressure points and I'll be adding a couple of volume related metrics that is missing in this. Volume are also important uh, to predict what the price should be. I will add volume related metrics. All this had to be part of the pipeline and served over REST APIs. And the idea is to complete everything by today and give it, but I was kind of down. I couldn't complete it. In one of your slides, you showed uh, how to calculate moving average or I mean you showed those features. Yes. So and angles and some things you said this moving slope and so on. Uh -huh. So yeah. are there packages, let's say in Python to calculate these things quickly? So that oh, developers don't need to implement this on their own. Somebody can write it. All the packages do very standard stuff. For example, you give a date, it will give it will give you all the 10 columns. What the year, month, date, weekday, week, whether it is a weekday or a weekend, all those things. Otherwise, it gives you standard transformations, which is the inverse log, uh, exponential, uh, square, square root transformations, not the mathematical transformations. You want mathematical transformations like let's say sine of something or uh, tan inverse of something. No. And those are easy because anyway functions are there. I'm talking mm. about like moving average, moving slope. Yes, uh, mm. those are not available in feature engineering tools, but uh, uh, all those uh, packages that allows you process data gives you functions. Pandas, for instance, gives you moving average functions, but not the feature engineering tools. Yeah. But in your data set, you are providing users these things moving slope. Yes, so you will get this data set. You will get much more interested data set, I would say. About 200 points where stock market provides you four numbers. So that each of them is a fingerprint, right? Every 20 minute is different from the other 20 minute. No two 20 minute candles are same. The idea is to capture the capture and generalize the 20 minute event. Capturing is one thing. Every 20 minute is different from the other 20 minute if you take directly the prices. But how do you generalize it? That's where this uh, features come into picture. Mathematically rich features come into picture. One question I had, uh, which is uh... I don't know in the real world in markets today are decisions mostly taken by humans, uh, fund managers, things like that are taken by algorithms. What is the okay. current? Uh, big, uh, big hedge funds and uh, investment banks have algorithmic tradings. Otherwise, uh, it's all uh, instinctive and uh, based on uh, subject matter experts and recommendations, mostly insider information. The reason I'm asking this is uh, it relates to this 20 minute window. Hmm. Uh, maybe 20 minute window or 30 minute window made sense when most of the decisions are human made by humans because maybe hmm. they take longer time to decide there is a certain pattern there. Hmm. But when algorithms are doing most of the trading, they hmm. may do it uh, you know in split seconds. So then maybe the variations fine. within the 20 minute window is too much. So maybe we need to bring it down to a 10 minute window. All these numbers. Yes, I, I mean, looked into just it. Just a guess from my end. I looked into it. What happens is when you take 10 minute window, every minute you get four price points. So for 10 minute window, you get 40 price points. I calculate all these metrics based on those 40 price points. 40 price points are too little. Henceforth, we took 80 price points. You, uh, I don't know here if you notice. Yeah, it's all 80 price points. 
20 minute window 80 price points you need uh, whatever statistical average we calculate you need substantial at least 25 to 30 data points are needed so that the number is dependable and we are not looking at the tick level and uh, we are looking at the sentiment we are not looking anything to do with the fundamentals so sentiment of the market will have to be modeled uh, I don't know at the split second you will end up losing um, money on overhead itself. Every trade you are going to pay tax. Whether you make money or not, that's called securities transaction tax. So it's not advisable to take position every minute also. Once in 10 minutes, once in 20 minutes, you take a position, close it. Only then you make sufficient profit after paying securities transaction tax. And remember, this is all short term capital gains. Henceforth, the capital gains tax also come into picture. So split seconds uh, investment banks can afford because they themselves are registered as brokers. They don't have to pay brokerage. Uh, they don't have to pay a uh, lot of things. Their systems are all their own systems. To people who depend on um, broker terminals or sub broker terminals and uh, who depend on uh, uh, rallies that is happening. Uh, it has to be either 15 minutes or 20 minutes. That's why I told you 20 minutes is my favorite. 10 minutes was too short. Mathematically things can be worked out in 10 minutes. Uh, you don't get open high low close most of the times. I'll tell you you will have only open and close. Mostly close will be high and open will be low. Otherwise if there's a variation that will be within First minute will be low, third minute will be high, fifth minute will be low, sixth minute will be close or something like that. Too volatile, too unstable for anything in 10 minutes. Henceforth, I chose 20 minutes. I'll be publishing two things 20 minute candle and 30 minute candle as a standard one. If people wanted 60 minute candle, we can go ahead and get it done. So from the source, you are getting a data point for every 15 seconds. Uh, from the source, tick level data also they provide. That's what they say. Uh, uh, but uh, uh, if they, uh, there are, there's a lot of processing to be done from my end, that's one thing I'm exploring. Uh, otherwise, I get the complete data with two minutes lag. Right. For example, 11.20 now, I get the data of open high low close at 11.18. 11.21 I get 11.19 so two minutes lag is there as of now. I want to I want 11.21 data then they provide data in web sockets at the tick level. I have to collect the tick level data, calculate the open high low close and then do all the operations which I've been doing. Uh, that's something has to be efficiently done. I'm exploring it. But uh, two minutes lag doesn't seem to be. I haven't started modeling yet, by the way. I have only completed feature engineering. Uh, but my hunch is this two minute lag should not be a problem uh, because uh, the when I when I built this features itself, I had some models in mind. So I am expecting in 15 minutes from now what will happen. And if I can get a decent accuracy there, just two minutes lag doesn't matter. Otherwise, I have to uh, invest more into systems and uh, uh, time into coding and uh, get it at tick level data. Yeah, one of the belief behind all the hmm? is that there is some algorithm or you know, is that not random? It is random in uh, uh, when you consider the next step. That is if it is now it is 11.23, 11.24 will be random, 11.25 will be random, but around 12 o'clock it will be you. You can expect certain uh, pattern. Uh, you know, uh, that's where the that's why things are working. How things are working today in the stock market is OK, the price is going to hit yesterday's high. It's going to cross yesterday's high, which means it will go up further. And the whole market thinks like that. 
and when the whole market thinks like that, prices automatically go up. Everybody will start buying, prices will go up. The price is hitting the yesterday's low, so it's going to go bust because it's hitting the yesterday's low. It is correcting itself. So sentiments have a pattern, if not data. Okay, thank you. Sentiments have a pattern. We are only capturing sentiment here. There is no rationale behind why the price should be this. Is it overvalued or undervalued? How what is how is it related to book value? There is no rationale behind or no rationale considered for building these features. It's purely to capture the sentiment. Okay, transaction level sentiment. Sentiments and sentiments follow a pattern. Whether data follow a pattern or not, is it purely random, partly random, questionable, debatable, agreed? But uh, sentiments do have a pattern. If we can manage to model the sentiment. Still, I've not started modeling, so data is available. A lot of people are waiting to model. So okay. what I understand is, uh, suppose Elon Musk puts out a tweet hmm. saying that uh, you know Bitcoin is great. I'm going to accept Bitcoin for my Tesla cars. Hmm. Then the markets will react. Uh, so sentiment, uh, that sentiment will be captured by yes. this data. Within five minutes also. So you are calculating this metrics every one minute. So within first three minutes, things will uh, the fingerprint will change drastically, and then your model should pick it up. So what what we have achieved so far is the getting the fingerprint. Beyond this, model should uh, pick it up and say we are, model wouldn't know Tesla or Elon Musk did make some announcement or not. Model will definitely know there is something disturbing happening. Uh, we should take position. That much model should know. So, based on what you presented, looks like even you know. Uh, providing data in a, uh, suitable for model itself will become a new business model. Uh, that's something I'm trying looking to capitalize. Stock markets are nothing new. It's been 200 years since the first stock market opened in US or somewhere. So uh, right from day one, they have been collecting data. The maximum they could do is to collect open high low close. Then computers came. All this kind of features, big banks, investment banks and hedge funds could calculate, but was not available for uh, people in the who are not in that ecosystem. So yeah, if I give this data, uh, anybody can use it. So it's a buy versus, buy versus build argument, right? If I can build, somebody else also can build it. Right, so that way so you know, data it's a buy versus build and... argument. Uh, uh, the uh, price is going to play a crucial rule uh, if it is appropriately priced so that buy is the cheaper option compared to build there is a model right. that way no data preparation time will come down yes okay 